joining me every Wednesday is National Senator Matt Canavan. Matt Canavan, thank you for joining me. The Prime Minister waiting for faceless Aboriginal activists to tell him what he thinks about a Makarata. I mean, what an extraordinary failure of leadership. Well, it is, Andrew. Uh, I mean, uh, we we think as a country that we are electing a, a prime minister at, at every election, and you'd expect that prime minister to be the one making decisions. But but here we have uh, a leader of the Labor Party that's harking back to a, to a previous era, as you've pointed out, that it seems to be there are a bunch of uh, faceless men and women, backroom men and women, who are, are going to tell our prime minister. Uh, what to do. These people, of course, are unelected. The, the backroom boys and girls here are unelected here telling the Prime Minister what to do. And whatever they do tell the Prime Minister, he now has no mandate uh, to proceed with a treaty. Uh, uh, the Australian people uh, last weekend rejected uh, the policies that the Prime Minister took to the election around the voice, and the treaty was always part of that. He always mentioned it together. He used to emblaze it on T-shirts before he got embarrassed. And he now has no mandate for that agenda. And I would suggest that if the Prime Minister wants to uh, wants to conclude a treaty uh, with Indigenous Australians, however he imagines that would happen, he has to take that to the next election. He has to go back to the Australian people, which is only now 18 months or so away, take it back to the Australian people and seek another mandate for that because he has none after this uh, this shocking defeat at the, at, the, at the referendum this weekend. Well, I think what he forgets, uh, thinking, well, look, it's, it's up to a bunch of unelected activists, Aboriginal activists, to tell me what to think. A treaty involves 100% of Australians. It's between two supposedly rival races or groups of races clashing and one paying the other. It's not for one tiny group of activists to determine the shape of it and what he should think. But, you know, you, you said, uh, oh, you know, the past. It's quite true. 60 years ago it is now, uh, the famous front page picture that destroyed Labor back then, the Labor leader, Arthur Corwell, Deputy Gough Whitlam, waiting out in the street uh, while inside the Labor Federal Conference was deciding what to tell them to say about, in this case, defence. Here we go. Uh, unelected people that I think sold him up the river in the first place by telling him to proceed with a very radical voice that uh, advisers were warning would not pass muster. And we'd have no idea, of course, who's in that room. We're not told it. Who knows? You, you've obviously got the, the activist groups that you've mentioned, but uh, Alan Joyce might be there, the big corporations, <laughs> the big banks. They might all be in these rooms telling the Prime Minister what to do. We have, we have no idea what, what, about that. And you've raised a good point there, there about any treaty obviously involves at least two parties. I would suggest two, of course. You've got hundreds of potential Indigenous tribes as well that have their own views on these issues and are... Uh, I think it's not right to treat them homogenous. I know, speaking to Aboriginal people, that they all have very different views and I'm sure would have very different views about any proposed treaty. And, of course, that other party is the Australian people and that's why I say that any proposal for a treaty needs to go back to the Australian people at the next election. This time, it would be good for the Prime Minister to actually provide the detail uh, to the Australian people before he wants to do any treaty. And, yeah, let's make the next election. The next election, if the Prime Minister wants, can be a referendum uh, on his proposed treaty. Let him do that. If he's confident enough, if he's got the guts to do this, let the Australian people have their say on this issue. Well, you had a whack at Alan Joyce, who famously, as uh, the boss of Qantas at the time, uh, promoted and sold and backed the, the, uh, the voice. Where is... Where are all those other businesses now? You know, the ones who donated $2 million of their sh shareholders' money without asking the shareholders, you know, like Wes Farmers and BHP and, and Rio, uh, Telstra, $1 million. Where are they all now uh, saying sorry or, you know, sorry to the shareholders for a start? Because I would have thought that with a vote this big against The Voice, a lot of shareholders won't be happy. Their money went to funding only one side of this debate. Look, they do seem to be copying it at, uh, at AGMs and uh, don't they deserve to do that? Uh, they probably won't get any kind of reduction in their remuneration or what have you. But, you know, I would hope, I would hope and maybe I'm hoping against hope, but uh, all of these big corporations wanted to, to back this voice, this what would have been a, a voice here from Canberra, largely reflecting their, their principles and values. Isn't it about time that our big businesses, our, our big organisations in this country uh, try and listen? 
So the, the voice is over now. Isn't it about time they actually listen to people? And you know, I would encourage them to get out and about. Have your AGMs outside just the capital cities. Talk to people because there's a real growing divide uh, that that is that is being being widened here because people see that decisions on the ground in their community are being taken out of their hands. It's not just the big corporations. You've got activist shareholders like BlackRock and Vanguard, big superannuation funds, who are making decisions about uh, the industries, uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the resource policies, uh, the energy policies that impact their real lives and their communities. And they've got no say on it, no voice. Uh, and this last weekend, they did get a vote and boy, did they send a message uh, to our big corporations. So let's hope they can listen to that because it, it's only if they do listen to that that we'll be able to put our country together again uh, and, and bridge this growing gap. Well, I'd like to see some of those executives take a pay haircut uh, to punish them for misspending uh, shareholders' money without permission on a campaign that, like I say, this vote suggests most of those shareholders would have objected to. Dramat Canavan, thank you so much indeed for your time. Thanks, Andrew.